This is Boxing Tickets and I were here at Cameron Taylor 2 and delighted to be joined with Dee Walsh. I didn't, I didn't know you were going to be here tonight. Um, obviously, I guess you get a late call up obviously in John Cooney's corner, but you'll do anything for a free ticket nowadays. Uh, no, 100%. Uh, once uh, Mark asked me to help out with the corner, I was straight down. I was going to watch this on TV anyway, so I may as well see it in the flesh. I guess you've been in and out of Dublin so much recently up at the National Stadium with the, with the amateurs and everything else. Um, I guess obviously the first thing to start off with obviously is Cameron Taylor to you tonight. How do you see the fight going? Well, I would love to see Katie Taylor doing it. Um, I think it's going to be a very hard task because she's lost there before, but I would love her to go out here and, and get the win. It would be absolutely unbelievable, especially for, for Irish boxing and, and Irish sport as well. Is, is it, I, obviously me as a fan, sometimes I guess you get stuck in that sort of, you get the blinkers on and go, you really hope for a win. What does Katie probably maybe need to do different tonight? Is maybe obviously controlling with a jab. We didn't see her footwork the last time. Does she have a lot she has to improve or does Cameron have to look really, really bad for Katie to get the one? Well, the way Mayweather would have adapted when he went up weights, where he would have used his jab and boxed with him more. So, if we take a leaf out of his book, you're probably better off just boxing and moving them. Do you know what I mean? And more or less steal the win. And hopefully she can do it. And obviously as back-to-back -back cards, you're obviously going to be on obviously of Jared Hughes and obviously a Conlon Gold card next week. It's, it's a strange fight obviously for Jared. There's obviously, I guess it's, you're probably having to calm him down maybe a wee bit because I guess the, the immaturity probably of both fighters being so young on, there's a lot of emotion that's going to come with it. I've seen obviously Rudy Farrell yesterday saying he obviously he's not just looking at Jared, but obviously he wants, you're obviously unbe unbeaten record with your fighters recently. They obviously, they, they, he wants to tar your record. So I guess he's trying to get you involved as well. But as a six round fight, obviously it's not going to be for a title. But how, are you finding it different with Jared? Obviously, I guess he's a bit more um, inexperienced and obviously a lot of other fighters. How are you finding, obviously, the build up for this for Jared? Well, one thing I will say is um, I'm glad that Jared is actually taking a 50 50 fight so early on um, because there's a lot of people who turn pro and they just want to be known as a professional boxer. But it was good to see the fact that he wanted a 50 50 fit, put himself in the firing lane and getting on a big show like uh, the zone or Eddie Herncott. So it's good to see. Um, in terms of preparation, some great. Um, he's getting plenty of sparring up in our camp with Connor, Cal Murphy, and also we have a lot of kids running about that weight. Well, not kids, but amateurs running about that weight in the ball school. So um, it's some great, great, great preparation. When it comes to Ryan Farrell saying that about um, he wants to take like man beating record. I'm not the one fighting him. So at the end of the day, um, it's absolutely it's nothing to do with me. Um, he's fighting Jared. He's, he's not fighting me. So, um, but at the same time, it shows that it must be also in his head too. The fact that our team's unbeaten and we obviously must be doing something right. The fact that the first time I ever done a, a professional corner was 2017 and uh, and we're still unbeaten now so hopefully we take it in the new year with with the unbeaten record but as I say I'm happy that uh, that he did mention that because as I say it's probably in his head and obviously the, the big cards don't stop obviously it looks like Potty's obviously going to be fighting Berlanga in January I guess it hasn't been totally confirmed as yet it's a good thing for you that obviously Jason Quigley's probably fought Berlanga as well so you obviously have a blueprint there of obviously what Jason's done it was maybe looking at a stage of maybe potentially of, of Potty and, and Jay Quigley fighting so does that sort of when you've seen what he's fought like against another Irish fighter, does that give you a sort of blueprint for success for Potty against Berlanga? Well, Potty and Jason Quigley are two different fighters, for one. Um, I've, al I've always known Jason Quigley. Me and him were on the high performance team at one stage back in 2008, I think it was. So I've known him a long time. I know how good he is, too. Um, but Potty's a, a different fighter altogether. Um, but I think Potty can definitely beat Berlanga, too, if, if it does come. You never know what way this game works. Um, it's uh, so I really hope he gets the fight first of all, and if he does, then I would actually fancy us to win. There's actually no one who any of my fighters fight that that I can honestly say that he would beat my fighter. It's just it's not in me to say it. You hear me? Corey loves the underdog mentality, obviously going to Germany and obviously a lot of people probably didn't expect he would obviously come away with the win. I guess with Berlanga you can sort of see that the chin's there, he's, he's easy to hit. Probably the, the one thing you maybe said with Jay quickly, if you maybe commit a bit more, 
he maybe could have forced the pace on a bit more. Potty's going to go there. He knows the odds are against him. Sort of, he's not going to probably be one in points. So he probably knows he has to go out there and hit him with, hit him with both hands, and and hope that obviously one of them lands properly to put him down. Well, at the same time, I think he probably could win on points too, um, because and people in the rest of me, Potty, they think he is just a puncher, but I know Potty. As I say, me and Potty started boxing together. Um, I think Potty was 14, I was 12. And I know how good Potty is and how talented he's always been. So he's not hes not just a puncher, even though he's got a massive punch. So um, uh, I could actually think he could win um, on points two or not out either one. Um, especially if we want to write game plan, I think we can do it. Yeah, no, the thing. Well, listen, thanks very much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the evening. And we'll see you in Belfast next week for Fight Week.